Hello, everybody. How are you doing? Today, we are looking at Navatsuraku Music 62, originally released November 2005. So, under 15 years ago now, about 14 and a half. What have we got in store here then? Well, the last two nows have been very, very good indeed. Uh, following a run of slightly disappointing ones, uh, 2005 has seen the franchise really come back with a bang. And I guess that's a reflection on pop music as a whole. Now that downloads are、uh, all part of the chart,、uh, it really has kind of reinvigorated、uh, the kind of music that's out there. The last couple、uh, of nows have had significantly fewer TV reality show acts. A lot more kind of progressive dance and RB, a good resurgence of rock and indie.、Uh, so let's see how this one fares. Will it be three out of three for 2005? Well, the early omens are good. Having had a look through the track listing,、uh, there's a fair amount. I like what I see.、Uh, so let's crack straight on. Here's song one it's the Sugar Babes, and it's their best song. Uh, for ages and ages, after a run of decidedly mediocre songs,、uh, here's an actual classic pop song.、Uh, got a good hook, good chorus, good melody,、uh, interesting and novel production.、Uh, so, yeah, good to see the Sugar Babes actually doing something、uh, sweet, as it were. Still not their finest moment, that's still to come.、Uh, we will come on to that very shortly. Uh, but uh, that's a good way of starting this album. Push your button. The on button, so now we're live and kicking. Robbie、uh, and Tripping follows up. Robbie Williams, yet again, must be his 30th song on one of these, I would have thought. Including Take That, maybe even 40.、Uh, pretty good song.、Uh, it kind of reminds you of the police almost. He sounds a bit like Sting. It's got a kind of vaguely scar, kind of white scar feel. It's not scar at all, it's just kind of vaguely rem- reminiscent of that. And yeah, he sounds a bit like Sting.、Uh, so that's quite interesting. Uh, now, Pussycat Dolls make their debut with Don't Ya featuring Buster Rhymes. They'd go on to have a fair few hits.、Uh, and、uh, I think they're、uh, kind of quite exciting for this kind of music. They certainly had a bit of personality and、uh, their songs are quite striking.、Uh, so that's that one that goes Don't You Wish Your Girlfriend Was Hot Like Me. Pussycat Dolls. Now, a song that's really, really reviled and it makes all sorts of worst songs of all time lists. Uh, but it's another one that I can't quite fathom why it's so hated. It's up there with people like James Blunt and Coldplay, and people that I find okay actually, to be honest. Yeah, I'm well aware that kind of public opinion is、uh, very anti it. In this case, it's Bad Day by Daniel Powter,、uh, which is commonly regarded as one of the worst songs of the 2000s. It's really not that bad,、uh, in my opinion. And if you think so, let me know why. Uh, as far as I can hear, it's got quite nice、uh, melody, quite nice vocals, good arrangement, good chord sequence.、Uh, yeah, you know, it could be a bit kind of、uh, saccharine, maybe. But, you know, he's not the first person to do one of those cure up, might never happen kind of lyrics.、Uh, so, fair play. Now, we follow that one up with a return for David Gray, who last made it on one of these with Babylon. And here he is. With a song called、uh, The One I Love. No, it's not the REM song, that would be quite interesting. But it's a pretty good song, actually.、Uh, and、uh, yeah, I don't know if it was quite as big a hit as Babylon, but it's, it's definitely kind of more credible and it's nowhere near as reviled as stuff like Daniel Bowser.、Uh, so, yep,、yeah, The One I Love, David Gray.、Uh, followed up by Kelly Clarkson and Since You've Been Gone. Another song with an old name, because there was an old rainbow song called Since You've Been Gone. Um, unfortunately, it's not that.、Uh, it's okay. It's a bit kind of、uh, MOR, really soft, soft, soft rock,、uh, if you can even call it rock.、Uh, I'm sure the ladies would like it,、uh, kind of empowered female stuff.、Uh, I, I find it a bit mad, but I don't really hate it. It's not too bad.、Um, so that's Kelly Clarkson and Since You've Been Gone. Followed up by a weird one Switch It On by Will Young. Now, I reckon if it hadn't been for reality TV, Okay, Will Young might not have made it as instantly and as big as he did, but I also think his reputation would be better. I don't think he'd be associated through being a reality TV star. And actually, when you break it down, his music wasn't that bad. And this song, apart from the drum, drummer sounding like he's falling down the stairs, the beat is really kind of a. Yeah, that's what it sounds like. It's kind of like a drum kit falling down the stairs. 
It's even got some harmonica and stuff on it. Um, so it's a, quite a worthy song, really. Switch it on. But as I say, I think Will Young is associated with reality TV. And if he'd if it done it the other way around and, and, you know, sort of made it without that, I think he'd probably have a lot more credibility. So there's maybe a lesson there. Uh, now, Girls Aloud, Biology. Uh, yet again, it's, it's kind of okay. It's maybe a bit above par for this sort of stuff. But it really doesn't break out the fact that it is very much a girl band. Uh, very contrived in a way. Uh, some guy in the studio puts it all together and just gets the girls to sing on it. Uh, if they did more than that, I have them in a big apology. Uh, if they were in there at the door, uh, sitting at Logic doing the drum programming, fair play to them. Uh, but I get the impression someone else did all that. They just came in and sang for a bit and then went off. <laughs> Could be wrong, though. Okay, McFly. Now, I always get the impression with McFly, they probably did sit around the computer, did, did kind of like work on their own music. Uh, they're very, uh, you know, they are kind of lumped in with the boy bands and stuff. But, I, you know, I try and do some critical thinking and work out which ones have got a bit of musical uh, acumen. And I, I think McFly, I'll be okay. It's a nice song. Uh, you know, I do think it's got some genuine kind of musicality to it. Uh, and it's definitely got some emotion. Uh, I'll be okay by McFly. Yep, that is very okay. Okay, it's my neighbours and friends now. Uh, I don't know if they still live up around here. Uh, but they're certainly still associated here. And every time you're going out on a Saturday night in Leeds, uh, this is one that you play beforehand to get you in the mood. Uh, Kaiser Chiefs, I predict a riot. Uh, I remember having a house party when I lived in Hyde Park. If you know Hyde Park, if you know Leeds, you'll know Hyde Park. And uh, I, I kept playing this before. It pretty much was a riot. Uh, we had pe people come and did graffiti on the walls. West Yorkshire raves. Uh, put a post on Facebook inviting everyone to our house. Uh, someone linked a laptop, uh, there was lots and lots of, uh, let's say, drink and uh, drugs. Not me, but, you know, people invited themselves and it's Hyde Park in Leeds. There's not really a lot you can do about it, really. Uh, so, yeah, Slice of Life in Leeds. <laughs> and the Kaiser Chiefs uh, capture that sound, that kind of uh, slightly manic, uh, threatening and ominous sound uh, quite well. But you get used to it after a while. You even grow to love it. Um, so yeah, I predict a riot. Great song. Uh, personal anthem in a way, really. <laughs> and followed up by the equally uh, rocking Franz Ferdinand and Do You Want To in their kind of, let's say, articulate, laddish uh, kind of music. Uh, it's laddish, but it's got brains and it's a little bit ironic as well. It's kind of well aware of of what it is. Very, very good band, Franz Ferdinand. Uh, definitely one of the best bands of the noughties. Okay, uh, sorry to cut the Kaisers uh, short, but it's another one I want to play. Uh, it's Katie Tunstall and Suddenly I See. This was probably her best song, I think. Maybe her biggest song. Uh, and, it, you know, I was just saying earlier about Girls Aloud not really doing a lot behind the scenes, probably. I'm sure Katie Tunstall did. I'm sure she was very, very in control of everything in terms of her music. She might not technically be the producer as such, uh, but she certainly seems like someone who's got total creative and aesthetic control. Uh, this is a great song, really, really catchy. Uh, good voice, good song, good lyrics, all the elements you need. Uh, and it sounds pretty unique, doesn't sound like anything else that was out at the time. Uh, so yeah, this is one of the classics of the noughties. Really, really good song. Uh, good strong start so far, actually. Definitely three out of three at this point. Anyway, for now 60, 61 and 62. The High Standard continues with Tattoo and All About Us. And that, again, is possibly their very best song. Uh, but it's got an absolutely massive chorus. Uh, it's really, really catchy and really big sound. Uh, Tattoo, All About Us, brilliant. I was reading, actually... Uh, I don't know if it's true or not, but apparently one of them got in a bit of a kerfuffle because of some comments they made about gay people, uh, and then she apologised for it. Uh, I, you know, it's just a bit of gossip, really. It doesn't really impact on the music, uh, but I think it maybe dented their popularity for a bit, uh, especially because everyone thought they were lesbians. Uh, so maybe the lady protests too much. Who knows? Anyway, I guess what I'd mention it because uh, spreading gossip and uh, 
malicious lies about people. <laughs> no, I'm only joking. I don't want to be doing all that. It's a music review. Okay, Hilary Duff. Duff by name, slightly Duff by nature. Not too bad. It's a bit of an 80s relic. Uh, it's kind of 80s AOR, really, in a way. A uh, bit soft. It's not too bad. I just... Uh, doesn't feel really brilliant, and it's definitely a poor man's Katie Tunstall, that's for sure. Okay, another quite quirky one for Rachel Stevens, who's very pleasantly surprised me with her solo stuff. Uh, it's kind of more techno glam stuff, and in a way, it almost sounds like Susie Quattro. Could have almost come from 1973 with slight kind of electronica edge, uh, but it's more glam than electronica, really, uh, and it's pretty catchy actually did nothing, really did nothing, very obscure her stuff, maybe tainted again by the S Club 7 thing, you know, it's kind of a double-edged sword, once you come associated with that stuff, uh, but you know, I do respect what she was trying to do with this album and this stuff, uh, trying to do something fairly decent, and I get that if no one else does, nice one Rachel. Okay, Liberty X, Song for Lovers, uh, that's another one, a bit like Daniel Powter, but I'd say significantly worse, and the only reason it's not called out the way Daniel Powter is, it's nowhere near as famous. It's just a bit forced. Be happy, be happy, be happy. Cheer up, it might never happen. Uh, it's not too bad, but equally it's not too great. Uh, Friday Hill, uh, Boy Bandy, uh, Baby Goodbye, a uh, bit mare really. Uh, does anyone know anything about Friday Hill? Does anyone listen to them? Now, talking of former boy bands, uh, Simon Webb and I'll get this one on because this was a good song as I always said with Blue uh, they were significantly better than average and Simon Webb put out a pretty good album and Lay Your Hands is a good song uh, yeah nice very classy uh, good stuff indeed I wonder if he's got webbed hands weird okay uh, now this is followed by the dire execrable is that a word execrable uh, Mariah Carey, uh, shit, that's the word I mean, we belong together, I just don't like Mariah Carey and I never will, she might have had one vaguely good song in the 90s, the Christmas one, uh, but you know, it's not December so we don't need to hear that, uh, no I just don't like Mariah Carey, I think she's soulless, uh, she's prima donna, she's just, it's music for people who don't like music is how I'd describe it. Okay, Elton and Electricity, he's back. Uh, it really kind of sounds like a knockoff of Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me. It's kind of a big Elton ballad, uh, and I think it was in Billy Elliot, uh, but it's, you know, he's done so many classic ballads. Uh, he's done at least 20 classic ballads. I don't think this is in his top 20, but it's okay. It's still better of Mariah Carey, so that's all right. Okay, it's another time for another Katie now, uh, and... This is a song about bicycles. Guess how many? Nine million bicycles in Beijing. I tell you what, there's a lot of bicycles around here at the moment. It might be lockdown, but every every mother's son's going out in their lycra shorts and their stupid clothes riding bikes at the moment. It's getting quite stupid, really. Uh, <laughs> you almost want to knock them off the road. <laughs> don't, don't write in if you're a cyclist. Uh, but, you know, you don't have to wear stupid clothes to ride a bicycle, let's be honest. Uh, you don't need to wear lycra, especially if you're some aging, fat guy. Uh, she's got a lovely voice. Uh, I'd rather see her riding a bike. Is it true? Are there 9 million bicycles in Beijing? How many are there in Wuhan? That's more interesting, maybe. Uh, so, yeah, but I love the song. Uh, I'm joking aside. Uh, What's this got in common with Wombles then? There's a good question. I believe, I could be wrong, I'm just going to check before I make a fool of myself. Uh, Mike Bat is the answer to that. The guy who did all the Wombles music, Remember You Were a Womble and stuff, he was the brainchild behind this. Uh, so there we go. Yeah, interesting. Uh, maybe you should ride a bike round uh, Wimbledon Common, try and mash up. <laughs> All right, okay, uh, this song is followed by Westlife, You Raise Me Up, meh. It's okay, but it's a bit granny-ish. Right, Gorillas are back with Dare. Uh, it, they're really having a good time here. It's, it's a good few years since they founded, uh, but they're really doing well. 
fully taking advantage of the downloads. Uh, and Dare, it's kind of a bit housey, a bit like slowed down house, quite arty, uh, a bit Sister Sisters here as well, as well. Right, now a real controversial one now. Uh, Gwen Stefani, Holla Back Girl. Is it good or is it shit? A lot of people say this is one of the worst songs of the 2000s, and I totally get that. I think Timberland produced it, but it's got some really cheesy midi horns on it that it thought it died, died a natural in 1992. Uh, and it's kind of the antithesis to this, really. Whereas this 9 million bicycles, it's all very smooth and mature and no real rough edges. Uh, that's not to say it's bad, it's, it's gorgeous. But uh, Gwen Stefani does it the other way around, very rash, uh, brash, should I say. Uh, just kind of like she's a, a, a 35 year old woman acting like she's at school going on about the teachers and stuff <laughs> and all that BA is, B is for bananas uh, I kind of like it even though it is utterly ridiculous uh, I think it's just fun really I, I, like I said with Rich Girl I, I think she's just having a laugh uh, and I think she's just, just really just making fun music okay uh, Kanye and Diamonds from Sierra Leone based on Diamonds of Forever uh, which was Burley Chassis or even Shirley Bassey and he's kanye it up a bit uh, and uh, why not indeed pretty good no, someone else who's kind of dissed a lot as are these next guys uh, Coldplay who really get it in the neck don't they uh, but I think this is a gorgeous song and I tell you what they've certainly had the views so I think the reason Coldplay get all the hate is that everyone's heard of them uh, and maybe some people are a little bit jealous but I think Fix You uh, which has had 381 million views uh, this is gorgeous gorgeous song pretty much just a kind of organ and vocals uh, for most of it and uh, the band kind of come in at the end uh, yeah I love this song this one really lifts me up uh, and uh, as if it wasn't good enough on its own it's part of one of the funniest comedy sketches I've ever seen uh, you ever watch Extras with Ricky Gervais uh, and they had that sitcom within a sitcom when the whistle blows <laughs> and uh, someone decided that uh, Chris Martin would come and do a cameo in the show and uh, <laughs> what's his name Ricky Gervais's character he's like what's Chris Martin from Coldplay doing in a factory in Bolton it's mental and uh, then he sings this as part of it uh, rather than me just describing the synopsis to you, just watch Extras with Chris Martin. Uh, he does a brilliant guest performance. It's hilarious. And he puts this song in it. Uh, so I like the song anyway. After that, I just love this song. Uh, possibly one of my best on the album, to be honest. Uh, great stuff. And if you don't like uh, Coldplay, well, fix you. Okay, uh, Oasis back with the importance of being idle. Pretty good. They had a bit of a resurgence oasis, didn't they, at this point? Uh, it's a good 11 years since they came out, and they're still going strong. Good stuff. Definitely not a flash in the pan, that's for sure. Okay, uh, Black Eyed Peas, Don't Lie. They, they kind of... Uh, it's a gentle downhill slope they're taking. It's not like they've suddenly fallen off a cliff. Every song is just a little bit not as good as the one before, uh, to the point where before you know it they're doing my humps they're still not there yet and as a result don't lie still better than it is bad uh, yeah not bad at all uh, so I quite like it but it's it's nowhere near as good as things like shut up okay Gwen Stefani no sooner have we uh, had her she's back again with Pharrell and can I have it like that you got it like that can I have it like that you got it like that she certainly had a busy naughties Gwen Stefani she's cropped up on this and that and the other uh, and she's doing stuff with other people. It's a pretty cool tune. Yeah, I like it. Good good rap. Good guest vocals from Gwen Stefani. Uh, you got it like that, indeed. Okay, now, uh, I mentioned with Rachel Stevens that she was on a bit of a glam thing. Uh, same as these guys. Uh, so maybe it was coming back a bit at this time. This is Goldfrap and Ooh La La. Say Ooh La La. No, it's not that one. But it's another one that could be filed under kind of electro glam. Got one of those almost glitter beats or whatever they're called. I hate to call them glitter beats, uh, but you know what I mean. Uh, there's a song as well called, uh, I think it's called The Crunch by the Raw Band. 
Uh, listen to that, and that's from 1976, I think, or 77. Listen to the raw band, The Crunch, and then listen to this, and then get back to me. Uh, yeah, great song, really good song. And uh, this is followed by another mashup Dr. Pressure, Milo, and Miami Sound Machine, uh, as in Dr. Beat. Remember that? Never made now four. It was on the, there was a, a rival series called the Hits Albums. Uh, they got to about they got to the end of the eighties. I think they got to about Hits eight or nine. Uh, and Hits one had Doctor Beat on it. Uh, they they scooped up all the songs that didn't make the nails. It was a really good song actually. And Doctor Pressure kind of keeps pretty much the original. She speeds it up a bit and adds more kind of housey stuff. Uh, and yeah, it's good good mashup, good songs. Okay, Bob Sinclair, uh, who I always associate with Daft Punk. I don't think he was in them, but I think he was one of their buddies. French kind of house and love generation with a kind of slightly reggae feel to it. Uh, yeah, it's quite anthemic. It's quite sing-along. Good uh, good kind of almost hippie-ish thing. Now, you don't get a lot of reggae on these nows. Uh, reggae is a weird kind of spin-off of reggae. Uh, very, very popular in Latin America and uh, hugely popular in Latin America uh, and uh, yeah, places like Puerto Rico uh, Cuba, Venezuela Gasolina that was one of the biggest reggaeton songs certainly one of the biggest ones to make the charts uh, in the UK kind of a bit annoying uh, a bit like Macarena it's kind of quite dancey uh, as in a dance craze one Daddy Yankee uh, I'm not sure if they had anything else that was a hit in England. Uh, so I would say that is definitely one of the biggest reggae hits of all time. Uh, and it's worth checking out just to, just to kind of check um, what reggae actually is. Uh, yeah, pretty good. Uh, but it definitely sounds better in a club uh, or on a dance floor than at home, maybe. Unless you live in Puerto Rico. Right, okay. Uh, now, Ponder Replay. Uh, Rihanna makes her debut appearance uh, with this one and uh, should we stick it on it's a bit of kind of pop culture history I know Rihanna would maybe someone else who gets quite a lot of haters uh, just because she was so bloody massive but Ponder Replay was a big 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 tune uh, very very big song indeed uh, and again it's got a quite a kind of Hispanic-y kind of feel to it uh, and uh, yeah good stuff uh, Rihanna would obviously go on to be one of the massivest stars of the late noughties. Uh, she had her moments. Uh, this is one of them, to be honest. So, yeah, good stuff. Uh, okay, another good song. Uh, I'll tell you what, this is a really good album as well. So, they're a real trio, a real hat trick. Now 60, 61 and 62. Uh, it's Amory and One Thing. Uh, one of those ones that's built around a sample, and I'm going to find out what it is. I should know. Uh, but I figure I can find out in five seconds. Yeah, did she do anything else? Uh, that's it's the meters and O oh, Calcutta. That's what it's sampled from. And yeah, that's right. It was in the movie Hitch. Do you remember that? Will Smith. Uh, not bad actually. Kind of chick flick, but pretty good. Uh, so that's Amory and One Thing. Uh, okay, Acorn is trying to atone for that abysmal lonely with Belly Dancer and uh, yeah not bad actually uh, way way better than Lonely uh, so yeah I quite like that one Belly Dancer okay now Matterfix and Big City Life uh, compared to the one that immediately follows it which I'm going to play it's like a kind of poor man's co copy a cheap uh, kind of uh, yeah imitation uh, the one that follows it is absolutely the real McCoy uh, so it's kind of a bit unfair sticking something so uh, like a poor imitation immediately before it because uh, Welcome to Camrock blows Big City Life out of the water. It's Damien and Damien Marley. Welcome to Camrock, yeah. This is now maybe overtaking Coldplay. It's my favourite song on the album. 156 million views. Uh, yeah, out in the streets they call it murder. And, uh, yeah, this is the most proper reggae we've had on one of these for about 10 years, it seems. Uh, just brilliant. He's, uh, he's kept the kind of classic Bob Marley family uh, sound, if you like. 
but it's modernised it, uh, and it's got a kind of social conscience to the lyrics. Uh, loads of people still listening to this. It's an all-time classic, really. Uh, Kimeka, Kimeka. Kiss Brilliant. Great bass line, great production, uh, and a great vocal performance. Uh, so, yeah, welcome to Camrock. Okay, uh, Depeche Mode are back. Rather incongruous, following up uh, Damien Marley with Depeche Mode. Uh, but it's still not a bad song. It's their first song for absolutely ages. I think the last time they made a Now was like Now 25 or something, or Now 24, way back in 93. So a good 10 years, 11 years ago. Precious. Uh, it sounds a bit like Enjoy the Silence, really. Uh, melodically, at least. Uh, but I love that. And I, I'm quite a big fan of Precious. Yeah, yeah, it's a good comeback. Uh, talking of 80s bands, U2 and City of Blinding Lights. Was this the one that was uh, lumped onto your iPad, whether you wanted it or not? Uh, which probably tainted it a bit, because if people had just been given the chance to come across it, they might have quite liked it. It's quite an anthemic song. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I think it was just kind of forced on people and that put them off. Uh, but it's a good song. Now, another good one. Uh, and I'm going to play this one, I think, to play us out. Uh, it's the Magic Numbers, who are on the last now. And here they are back again with Love Me Like You. This is more kind of retro rock, really. Uh, like Almost like garage rock. But it's a great, great song. Uh, really, really good song. I tell you what, this has been a good now, a very, very good now. Uh, and it's all across the genres. They've had good stuff from everywhere, really. This is followed by Texas and Getaway. It's a return to form. Uh, maybe not one of their most famous songs, but at least there's no uh, attempt to do hip-hop on it. At least they're just doing what they do. And finally, uh, Bon Jovi. Uh, no Strangers to the Now series. First made a Now way back on Now 9. Have a nice day. And yeah, it's it's kind of fairly cheesy, but it's Bon Jovi. When are they ever not cheesy? Uh, it's just part of who they are, really, and part of what makes people like them. Have a nice day is everything you'd expect from a Bon Jovi song. Okay, so let's go through this brilliant album, actually. What songs on here are real classics? Well, I think Push Your Button must be one of Sugar Babe's best songs. You've heard how rude I've been about loads of this stuff. Even I like that one. Don't Share Bother Pussycat Dolls, uh, welcome to them. Bad Day by Daniel Powter, a lot of people hate it, a lot of people love it. Uh, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few eggs, I like it. Uh, the One I Love by David Gray, not sure how well known it is, but it's a pretty good song. Uh, I Predict a Riot by the Kaiser Chiefs, absolutely. Do You Want To by Franz Ferdinand. Katie Tunstall, Suddenly I See. Tattoo All About Us. There's a good run of classics. Uh, I don't think Electricity is one of Elton's classics. Nine Million Bicycles by Katie Millua. Yeah. Uh, Dare by Gorillaz, I think. I kind of love it or hate it, but it's kind of a classic, even if it is irritating. Hollaback Girl, Gwen Stefani. Uh, Ditto Diamonds from Sierra Leone by Kanye West. And another one that's probably love it or hate it, Coldplay, Fix You, but I think it's definitely a classic. Uh, Importance of Being Idle, Minorly by Oasis. Not one of their real big ones. Uh, can I Have It Like That by Pharrell and Gwen, Minorly. I think Ooh La La by Goldfrapp, definitely. I think Doctor Pressure by Milo and Miami Sound Machines, good mashup, one of the most well-known. Love Generation by Bob Sinclair, yep. Uh, Gasolina a reggaeton uh, anthem. Ponder Replays, one of Rihanna's most famous and best songs. One Thing by Amory, kind of one hit wonder in England anyway. Belly Dancer, that makes up for things with Acorn, uh, makes up for Lonely. Uh, Welcome to Jam Rock, big reggae, uh, almost dubstepy uh, classic. Uh, more dub than dubstep, but kind of a bit dubstepy. Uh, Damien Marley. Uh, Precious by Depeche Mode and City of Blinding Lights, you two adequately. This one, I think, is a bit of an indie classic. Magic Numbers, Love Me Like You. And uh, Have a Nice Day by Bon Jovi is a kind of AOR classic, or a Bon Jovi classic, really. So, very, very good album from a very, very good year. Thoroughly enjoyed 2005. Thoroughly enjoyed Now 60, Now 61, and Now 62. Let's see if they can keep it up for Now 63. Okay, you take care, everybody. Have a great day, whatever you're up to.